Oh, we could be live in oh, we could be live in like seconds. In like seconds here. Okay. Hi, I'm Melissa from Yoga with Melissa, and today we are doing a live class as we do on the last Friday of every month. So thank you so much for joining us today. A uh, special warm welcome to our American friends today who are joining us post Thanksgiving. Um, this is a wonderful class to do post Thanksgiving just to find some calm amidst your holidays. And also a very special thank you to all of you who are taking the time out of your day to join us. I think this is going to be a beautiful class to find some balance and to restore and nourish our energy when I don't know about you, but I'm really just feeling bombarded by this kind of frenetic energy of Black Friday sales right now. And so to take this time for, to turn inwards and to practice the inner practices uh, of meditation, of yin yoga, is such a beautiful practice to nourish our inner lives right, in a world where we're always being pulled up and out and encouraged to consume more and do more and be more. We can keep coming uh, down and in, and that takes a lot of energy uh, and intention to pull ourselves out of that. So let me know if you can hear me okay, if the volume is okay. Also, uh, let me know in the comments where you're joining us from. If you're here, say hello, and we'll just have a little conversation to get going. Uh, post any questions that you might have about uh, this practice today, about yin yoga, about the meridians, because I'm happy to answer them for you, especially before we get started and after. What we'll do is I'll field a few questions before we get going. I've got some questions that you've been sending me, so thank you so much for sending me so many great questions. I love hearing from you. Uh, and if you have any questions before we get going about yin yoga, about the meridians, and about um, yoga in general, now's a great time to ask. We will go into quiet practice where we focus really inwardly on our practice, and then we'll come out again and have time to spend together afterwards. So who's joining us, Tim? Um, hello from Hungary. She can hear you okay. Okay, thank you for joining us from Hungary. It's great to have you with us. I'm glad that the volume is okay. So the first question I have is from Barbara from YouTube, and she wants to know what is yin yoga? First, we'll say hello to somebody else who isn't joining us. Uh, from Illinois, Hello from Tina. So glad that the sound and the volume is okay. Thanks for letting us know, and happy Thanksgiving to you, Tina. Thanks for joining us for this post-Thanksgiving uh, way to balance your energy. So Barbara from YouTube wants to know what is yin style yoga. We've got somebody else joining us now. Um, Yoho from Cary, Illinois. Yoho from Cary, Illinois. Illinois is well represented today. <laughs> Jane Lavender. That's a lovely last name. Jane Lavender. From Tustin, California. From Tuscan, California. Another American. Happy Thanksgiving, Jane. Lucille from Toronto. Hello, Lucille. Lucille is a beautiful member from Toronto. We both did, um, well, we've both uh, trained in Phoenix Rising Yoga Therapy, and she's a wonderful member of our community. So, hello, Lucille. Uh, Rachel from Oakland, California. Rachel from Oakland, California. Uh, Welcome. Lily from Rome. Lily from Rome. Welcome, Lily. Jane Monroe. Hello, Jane Monroe. Jane is also another beautiful, wonderful member of our community. And I know Jane has been very much looking forward to this. And also our members, just to let you know, are going to be getting another, they get a more in-depth version of this. So uh, the, the last Sunday of every month, they get a 90-minute yin yoga workshop. And so that's coming up in just two days. They get, they get that as well. Uh, Teresa Goodman. Hello, Teresa. Teresa. 
from North Carolina. She's been a long time member as well. Been around for as long as I can remember. Sammy from. Uh, Sammy from. Georgia. From Georgia, we think. <laughs> Welcome, Sammy. Again, happy Thanksgiving to all our American students. It's wonderful to have you with us today. Sylvia from um, Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Sylvia from Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Yeah, so let me know in the comments if you have any questions about yoga, about yin yoga, about uh, the meridians. That's what we're going to be talking about today. I'd be happy to answer them before we get started and as we get started. So Barbara, as I said, she wanted to know what is this yin style of yoga? So the way that yin, the yin style of yoga gets described often is in relation to yang. So I like to use the example of the sun and the moon. So if the sun is yang, then the moon is yin. And yin has, like the moon, a much more quiet, reflective, still, introspective quality to it. So like the moon, yin style yoga is very nourishing, reflective, quiet, still, you know, we, we come into the poses, we resolve to be still, we hold them for a longer period of time. It's like the night. So whereas yang style of poses are more like the day and they're more active, the yin style of poses are more quiet and introspective. So it's a very quiet and introspective practice, very deep practice. And along those lines, unlike the yang style of yoga where we're working the superficial layers of the muscles, you know, very uh, fast, active contraction. So we're working the superficial muscles that are more elastic. We're going deeper into the body, to the connective tissues that wrap around the joints and the bones. And we're not stretching them. We are stressing the joints and and uh, the connective tissues, and we're pressurizing the bones to build bone density with slow and gentle traction. So that's what we're doing in yin yoga. The, the component that we're going to be adding today for the beginners that we're going to be discussing are the meridians. When we do this slow and gentle traction, what we are doing is we're stimulating the meridians or the energy lines in the body so that there's a smooth flow of energy. So often when there's illness or disease or emotional discord in our body, even mental blockages, there's some form of energy uh, blockage in our body. And when we do, when we pressurize the body, when we put stress on the body and the meridian channels, we improve the free flow of energy bodies so, so that there can be balance and a free flow of energy through the meridian channels of the body. And finally, and this is what we will be covering next week, because yin yoga is very introspective, it provides a very beautiful platform for training mindfulness. Because there's those long, slow holds, we can actually train our mental bodies to our minds. And it's a beautiful training ground for meditation. So I hope that helps to explain a little bit better, Barbara, what the yin style of yoga is. And if you have any more questions about that, if it's not clear yet, just let me know in the comments. I'm happy to speak further about it because I know it that it is quite different from many other styles of yoga. Tim. Uh, Tina, Tina asks if there's a map of the meridians. Yes. Uh, Tim, will you pass me on the desk? There's two books, actually. Can you pass me both of them? There's the Yin Sight one that's under that lamp, actually. And then there's Brightening Our Inner Skies. Okay. So, Tina, this is a great... Well, here, I'll come to you. <laughs> okay. So Tina, this is a great question, and there's there are, uh, is this is the book that I go to again and again. Tina, I think maybe you teach yoga. If and any of you that are yoga teachers, this is a great resource. Sarah Powers is is my teacher's teacher. I train here with Carly Forrest and Victoria VC. Wonderful teacher. If any of you live in Victoria, I highly recommend going to her classes. But uh, Carly trained with Sarah Powers. And this is a wonderful book, e very accessible. You can walk into any, go to your local bookstore. <laughs> It'll be in your local bookstore. Support small bookstore owners. And uh, so, Tim, you're doing a close-up on that. I wanted to show the meridians in it. Okay. But I think she does a beautiful job of mapping the meridians in here. 
It's the book I go to again and again. Here we go. So this one shows the, the kidney and the urinary bladder meridians, for example. And then, uh, not only that, but she also then gives some sequences for it, or shows what poses. Uh, another book that I've been using a lot lately uh, is Brightening Our Inner Skies by Norman Blair. This one doesn't do as good a job. Like, it's a different book, right? He didn't rewrite Sarah's book. Uh, it's more kind of meandering, which is actually very yin in its way, too. So it, it encourages a very yin way of reading as well. Uh, but it, it does some things differently than Sarah, which it should. It's a different book. <laughs> Uh, it w some of the things that I think it does well is uh, and better than Sarah is shows the poses and then what meridians it affects, and then also at the end um, it does this nice yeah it does this nice kind of um, table with all the meridian channels and so it's got some great resources in it. I, I find myself going to this book a lot, actually. And actually, uh, as I say, it's got a very kind of yin way about it. So I find myself meandering through it and, see, just kind of going back to it again and again. And that's a very yin way of being. Yeah. So I, I like it a lot. And actually, I'm in, I've been in touch with him. I know he wanted to do an interview. I think he must be away right now because he's not responding to me <laughs> about doing an interview. So... I think there will be an interview from him at some point. So uh, that's yin yoga. I have another question. Actually, so this, this points really beautifully to this because Paige from our membership community asked, I've noticed this, some differences in the names of asanas between hatha yoga and yin yoga, and she wanted to know why. So I thought that was a great question, Paige. So um, also, uh, before I answer this question, if you have any questions about the differences between maybe hatha yoga or restorative yoga and yin yoga or any form of yoga and yin yoga, you know, feel free. Now's a good time to leave them in the, in the comments and I'd be happy to answer them before we get started or, or after we do the practice. So I thought that Norman had a really good answer in his book. So I'm just going to read you his answer about that. So what he says is, the names for the poses are deliberately altered from the Sanskrit way as a way of cultivating beginner's mind so that we can be more alert and bright than the expert's mind where there could be difficulties in fullness. You know, if our mind's too full, we can't be open to what we're trying to receive, what we're yeah, trying to receive, and also there can be dullness um, that we've seen it, we've been there, we've done that. So beginner's mind can definitely be a place of um, bright inner skies. The changing of the names also emphasizes that this is a different way of practicing than you might be familiar with. And then I have uh, one more question before we get started, unless there's some other questions from any of you. Mary says, um, I have trouble relaxing in heart melting pose, or many of you from uh, yoga know it as puppy pose. Tim, I'll need you to change the angle here so they can see the pose. Well, we might have to wait for Tim to get back to. Uh, Just making sure your bandwidth's not being used by certain oh, Okay. <laughs> So um, the pose that she's talking about is puppy pose. So I was hoping that you could show that. Uh, okay, so she says that she has a lot of problems in her neck in this pose. So this pose, puppy pose or heart melting pose. And I get that if you come into the pose and we're holding it for two minutes in a beginner's class or those of you that are doing the uh, indulgence workshops with me, the five minutes in those classes, that can be a lot of time, if you, especially if you have a neck injury, for tension to accumulate in this pose. So what she asked is, is it okay if I push down into my arms a bit so I can ground a bit more in this pose? So I think this is a great question, and I'm really glad that you asked. 
and that you're asking for alternatives and way around ways around to find ways around it. So you may remember back in episode 408 when we talked about yin energy and even at the beginning when I talked here right now, we talked about yin being softer, gentler, um, a way of relaxing into our body so that we can access the deeper layers of the connective tissues. And then in episode 409, we also explored how we soften our muscles to let gravity take the weight of our body so that we can let the energy pool in the deeper layers of the connective tissues that wrap around the, the joints and the bones. So these, the stillness of these pose, they let us access the qualities of surrender, ease, relaxation, and restfulness. And softening our muscles allows gravity to take us. And it really allows us to access the deeper connective tissues. So if you start to press into the poses, you're going to start to access the muscles. And then we're not getting to the deeper layers of the connective tissues. So personally, I think that we want to look at, okay, so what energy lines or what meridians are we trying to affect when we're doing that pose? So when we come into puppy pose, we're trying, we're affecting the the meridians of the upper body. And we don't need to know exactly what meridians we're affecting, but you can see that in this pose, you can feel into your body and you can feel into, okay, we're, we're affecting the meridians along the underarms here. So what ways could I still affect those poses, not compress my neck, get tension in my neck, and still affect the body here, but embody those yin qualities of surrender, ease, relaxation. So I would say, let's take another pose entirely and get that tension right out of your neck. So I would recommend, I think it was Mary, that you could take instead, okay, let's get into these meridian lines along the backs of your arms. So instead, you could take banana asana. Come into a side bend here. You can take your arms all the way up. You're still accessing those meridians. Okay? And then the neck tension is totally gone. Your neck is elongated. Your neck can relax completely here. Another option would be to take broken wing pose because then you're still getting on the inside of your arm and then the neck tension is completely gone. Okay, so don't be afraid to change at the pose. There aren't very many poses at all in yin because yin yoga is not an aesthetic practice. It's not about getting the poses. It's an energetic practice. It's about accessing the subtle body. And when we're in the pose, if we can feel it, then we're doing it. And that's, that's the main thing. So I really wanted to emphasize that point today. Okay. Any other questions before we get started? You guys are always such a quiet group. <laughs> All right, I will take you to be a group of quiet students who are eagerly awaiting the class. Give me some smiley faces in the comments if that's true. <laughs> Oh, we've got like a minute delay, okay. All right. I'm gonna have a drink of tea before. Any smiley faces? Yeah. <sighs> Are you ready, Tim? I'm just waiting for you. Why? Oh, right. We don't have to press record. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Have you ever wondered how yin yoga works as a form of acupuncture, needless acupuncture, affecting the meridian lines and energy lines in your body? Well, if so, this beginner yin yoga class is for you. Hi, I'm Melissa from Yoga with Melissa, and this is Real Yoga for Real People. We're all about connection. Connection to a teacher and teachings that allow you to connect to your true nature and a community of people that are dedicated to a genuine path of spiritual transformation. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications by pressing that little bell because I have lots of great classes for you. We put out a brand new class every single Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific and on the last Friday of every month we have a live class like we're having today. And I have some great classes coming up for you on December the 1st. We're going to do our last beginner yin yoga class for now on mindfulness. December the 8th, we're doing yin yoga for hips. December 15th will be yin yoga for sleep. December 22nd will be yin yoga for neck and shoulders. December 29th will be yin yoga for lower back and hips. And that will be our next live yoga class. That will be Friday, December 29th at 9 a.m. Pacific. So be sure to mark that on your calendar. The yin yoga class class for lower back and hips. So be sure to subscribe and press that little bell so you don't miss any of those classes, especially if they interest you. And then you'll be notified as soon as they are available. If you like today's class, be sure to press that like button and let me know what you like about it in the comments so that I can continue to make content that you are enjoying. If you're brand new to yoga or yin yoga and you get frustrated with other classes that don't explain very well what's happening or don't give detailed instructions, don't give modifications, then don't worry. This is actually a beginner yoga class. We will give lots of modifications and in fact we will give a preview of the whole class so that you know what's coming and if this is a good fit for you. I have a testimonial today from Donna from my website. So Donna speaking about last week's class when we explained why we stress the deeper connective tissues that wrap around the joints of the body. And Donna said, I'm pretty sure I need yin yoga for all of the reasons you mentioned today. My hips feel like they're just trying to lock up tight. And this class really held for 20 hours. That's pretty amazing relief. Plus, that's really good motivation to do it every day. Thank you so much. So thank you so much, Donna, for taking the time to leave your comments on my website. And thanks to all of you who take the time to leave your comments here on YouTube, in on Instagram, on Facebook, on my website, on SpeakPipe, and on iTunes. And as always, the most in-depth conversations happen in our membership community. Thanks to Squeeze Yoga Clothing for my clothes. Today I'm wearing a gray tunic and black yoga pants. And thanks to Dusky Lee for our props. In yin yoga, it's a really good idea to put down a blanket underneath you so you have extra padding underneath your joints, especially your knee joints. Dusky Leaf does make these wool blankets. I let you know because it can be difficult finding them. It's not like when our grandmas were alive and they were in the stores. They don't really have these kind of blankets in stores anymore. Um, you'll need a blocks and a strap. And if you don't have those, it's fine. You can use um, cans from your kitchen and you can use the tie from your bathrobe. If you have any injuries or medical conditions, if you're new to yin yoga or yoga in general, you need to make sure you speak to your medical doctor before you start any yoga practice. Just ask your medical doctor, are there any movements that I should avoid when um, undertaking any form of exercise? And then you'll know what you need to do to take care of yourself when you come into a yoga class because I cannot see you, I cannot look after you. So you need to talk to your doctor about that before you do a class. Once you know that, then you'll be able to look after yourself in this class.
So what to expect from today? We usually uh, do this in post-production. Tim usually does a nice job of editing this in, but I can do a quick preview for you of what you're going to be seeing in this class. We're going to be doing butterfly pose. And then we're going to be doing sphinx pose. From there, we will do banana asana. Banana asana. Side, bend Side bend on your back. And, and we will do, we will do dragon, pose. dragon pose. And we'll do This is what you'll need your strap for. We'll do foot to sky pose. Don't worry, I'll be giving lots of modifications. Foot to sky pose out to the sky aside. And we will be doing recline twist and a shavasana. So if that seems doable for you, then we will get started. You can lie down on your back. And if you have any back issues, then I recommend you lie down with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. So begin by feeling the support of the earth underneath you. Let your breath slow down and breathe into your lower belly. Okay, so from here you're going to roll to your side and make your way up to seated. And then you'll bring the soles of your feet together. If when you sit like this, your pelvis rolls backwards, then you want to sit up on a folded blanket so that your pelvis tips forward more easily. And then I also recommend filling the space between your, your knees and the ground just to support your joints a little bit better. And then from here, you're going to fold forward and find an appropriate edge. So the space between too much and too little, I like to recommend 70% in a yin yoga class. Remember, we're trying to find a space of ease and relaxation, but you also want to be able to feel sensation on your inner thighs, probably back into your groin. This pose affects all the major meridians in your body. So remember, in a yin yoga pose, 
we come into our shape, we find that appropriate edge, nothing with sharpshooting pain. We want to be able to take a deep breath. And then we resolve to be still. And we stay for two minutes in a beginner yoga class. So today we're focusing on the meridians and these are the energy channels or the pathways through which our chi energy or prana flows. These pathways are often described as the waterways that feed the fields of our bodies or rivers of energy. Traditional Chinese medicine calls them meridians and Ayurvedic medicine and yoga refers to them as nadis. So you may wonder why we so often start our yin yoga practice with butterfly pose. Well, butterfly pose affects the six main meridian channels of your lower body. The kidney meridian, the liver meridian, the spleen meridian, your stomach meridian, your gallbladder meridian, and your urinary bladder meridian. So there are 12 major meridians in our body, six in our upper body, and six in our lower body. Our yin energy moves upward, and our yang energy moves downward. These energy circuits run throughout our body and they're also linked to our organs. So let's slowly come out of the pose and lie back on our back so we can feel the rebound or the effect of this pose in our body. Okay, so from here you're going to roll over onto your stomach. So on your stomach you're going to Wiggle your hips from side to side. Tuck your right toes under. Lift your knee, reach back through your heel. Tuck your left toes under. Lift your knee, reach back through your heel. Feel all the space you just created in your low back. And then you're going to walk your elbows back to underneath your shoulders. So we're coming into Sphinx pose now. And you might wonder why we so often do this pose second in a yin yoga class. And the reason for this is that this pose really affects your kidneys and your kidney meridians. So the kidney meridian starts at the little toe in each foot and it runs through the sole up the arch, up the inside of the legs, it enters into the torso, it runs along the middle of the body on both sides of the spine at the front of the body, and it ends at the root of the tongue. So according to traditional Chinese medicine, the kidneys house our essence energy, or our jing qi. This is our energy storage system. It's kind of like our battery pack for our bodies. So we start our practice with Sphinx Pose to put pressure on the kidneys to stimulate energy for our yin yoga practice. So we have enough energy to practice and also energy for our day. 
the, but it's important to remember that balancing our energy is so much about what we do in 23, the other 23 hours of our day, not just what we're doing. We have to learn how to appropriately spend, store, and conserve our energy. Do I need to repeat any of that? So you're going to slowly lower yourself down and rest on your belly and feel the rebound of that posture, particularly in your low back. Okay, then you're going to roll over onto your back. Okay, so you're going to take your feet over to the left side of your mat. Take your arms overhead, hold on to your elbows, and then walk your arms over to the left side of the mat as well. And you should feel this along the side of your body. Okay, if it feels like it's too much, you can always come back a bit. You keep your arms down. Um, yeah, you can just back off a bit.
Okay, so you're going to come out of the pose, come back to the center, and just feel the effect of the posture in your body. So when we place our bodies in shape in yin yoga, we are pulling and pressurizing our tissues, which moves energy and blood through the meridian channels. In this way, yin yoga is a kind of acupressure where physical pressure is being applied to your body at certain points as it pulls on your fascia with slow and gentle traction. So let's do this pose on the other side. Take your feet over to the right side of your mat. Bend your body over to the right side of your mat and take your arms overhead. Okay, so you're going to slowly make your way back to the center of the mat and feel the effects, the rebound effect of the energy moving through your body after this posture. So this pose, Banana Asana, it affects your side body, which is your gallbladder meridian, runs along the sides of your body. But it also affects your hearts, lungs, and small intestine meridians, which are your upper body meridians. The gallbladder meridian is the yang organ to the liver yin organ meridian partner. And when the gallbladder meridian energy is balanced, we'll be assertive and able to make decisions. If it's imbalanced, we'll feel uninspired, have difficulty making decisions and following through. Okay, so we're going to bend our knees again. Actually, I'm going to show you the modification while I'm here before I come up for the next pose. So the next pose is lunge pose, um, or it's also called dragon pose in yin. If it bothers your knee to put weight, to bear weight on your knee, then you can always do this pose on your back by holding onto your foot like this, drawing your knee into your chest. Okay, you'll still get the same benefits, especially if we're looking today at yin yoga as a energy practice, then we only need to put the body in the shape and then the meridian lines are being affected. Okay, having blocks is useful or a chair. And you're going to begin by stepping your left foot through, leaning forward until you feel sensation on the front of your right hip. So 
So dragon pose. Oh my gosh. Dragon pose affects your stomach meridians which run along the fronts of your legs and up the middle of your body on both sides. Your stomach is responsible not only for digesting your food, but also for digesting your emotions and thoughts. It is responsible for absorbing what nurtures your spirit and letting go of what doesn't. So given this, your stomach and its partner, the spleen, are most affected by chronic worry, anxiety, and overthinking. So ironically, this pose, which is so good for balancing anxiety, is also one that causes a lot of anxiety for people. But it's a really good pose for anxiety. Okay, you're going to slowly make your way out of lunge pose. I like to come to kneeling after lunge pose. You can lie on your back if you want. And then we'll take a step into lunge pose on the other side. So take a step forward with your right foot. Lean forward until you feel sensation along the front of your left thigh. So we're affecting the stomach meridian on the other side now. So a very que good question might be, What's the difference between yin yoga, hatha yoga, or any other form of exercise? Because if we're putting our body into shapes, wouldn't any kind of exercise affect the meridians and energy channels of our body? So that's a very good question. So Sarah Powers, one of the founders of yin yoga, points out that any form of exercise done regularly with rest afterwards will do something similar. But the difference with yin yoga is that we are training our minds. And we will talk a lot more about this next week, the connection between yin yoga and mindfulness training. And that's something we'll be delving into a lot more deeply and we do delve into a lot more deeply in our membership community. Um, yeah, but just suffice to say that that is the, a big difference. Okay, so you're going to come back into kneeling or lying on your back and pause, feel the effects of this pose in your body.
And then we're going to come back down onto our backs. You're going to need your strap for the next pose. So if you have any low back issues, I recommend you keep your non-gesture leg bent in this posture, foot to sky pose. You're going to take your strap and you're going to place it around the ball of your foot, not around the arch of your foot. You're going to place it around the ball of your foot and extend your right leg to the sky, foot to sky pose. You want to draw your leg in so you feel sensation along the back of your leg but you also want to be able to have ease and relaxation in the pose. Shoulders should be able to rest on the ground. You don't want to have white knuckles in this pose. So this pose affects your urinary bladder meridian, which runs up the backs of your legs and up the back of your body. It's the longest meridian in your whole body. And this meridian is known as the guardian of peace in your body. So you're going to release this pose from your body. If you have any low back issues, then your release is best to be kept with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. Otherwise, you can extend your legs out and feel that rebound effect in your body, especially the difference between your right and left leg, the back of your body. Then you can bend your knees again. Place your feet flat on the floor. You're going to take your strap and place it around your right foot again, the ball of your foot again. And this time you're going to take your foot to the sky, foot to sky pose, and you're going to open your right leg out to the side until you feel sensation on the inside of your leg. Remember, this is an energetic practice. It's not an aesthetic practice. It doesn't matter what this pose looks like in your body. You just want to be able to feel sensation on the inside of your leg. We're affecting the liver meridian right now. The liver meridian 
is responsible. When it's imbalanced, you'll feel angry, irritable, frustrated. When it's balanced, you'll feel you'll have free and easy flow of energy through your body. Okay, so you're going to bring your right leg back to the center. Release your right leg down and feel the echo of this posture. And then let's do the same postures on the other side. So you're going to take the strap around the ball of your left foot, extend your left leg in the air, draw your left leg in until you feel sensation along the back of your left leg. So remember we're affecting the gallbladder meridian here, the longest meridian in your body runs along the back of your leg up the back side of your body. Okay, release this posture down. Give yourself some time to feel the echo of this posture in your body.
So when the urinary bladder meridian is balanced, you're going to feel calm, peaceful, hopeful, and you'll look forward to life. When it's imbalanced, you'll lack energy, you'll be inflexible, fearful, and you will resist change. Okay, let's do the liver meridian on the other side. So knees are bent. You place the strap around the ball of your foot again. Extend your leg up. And you're going to open your leg out to the side. Until you, just until you feel sensation in the, outs, in the inside of the leg. Okay, and then come back center. You're going to release that leg down. <sighs> and feel the rebound in your body. You can put your strap off to the side now. And you may need a cushion or a folded blanket for the next pose for as a, a prop to support you. You're going to bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor. Press into your feet, lift your hips, take them over to the left side of your mat, and then lower your legs down onto the right side of the mat. If you, when you do that, your left shoulder lifts up off the ground, then what you're going to do is you're going to fill the space underneath your knees until your shoulder goes down onto the ground. So I'm going to use uh, this cushion that I have here. And then my shoulders can lay flat here in this twist pose. So you come into the pose, you resolve to be still. So this pose affects your gallbladder, your spleen, your small intestine, and your large intestine meridians. So let's go back to that question of what's the difference between yin yoga and any other form of yoga or exercise. And the difference is the training of our mind. So Norman Blair, the author of Brightening Our Inner Skies and Yin Yoga says, if a person is pedaling a static exercise bike while checking emails, the energy flows will probably be less than for a person who's doing an activity like yoga, qigong, or running and consciously attending to their experience of movement.
Okay, come back to the center, press into your feet, untuck your hips, pause here, feel the effects of the posture. And then press into your feet again, lift your hips, take them over to the right side of your mat, lower your knees down to the left side of the mat, and if you need to fill the space with the cushion because your shoulder is lifting off the ground, then you can fill that space and then come into stillness again. So as I said, we'll be focusing a lot more on the mindfulness aspect of yin yoga next week. But this week we'll focus on how putting our bodies into shapes affects the movement of energy in our body, our organs, and our emotional states. So suffice to say, someone with a distracted mind will have scattered and destabilized energy, but somebody with a focused mind will have smooth and even flowing energy. So you're gonna come back to the center, press into your feet, untuck your hips. And we'll actually come into final Shavasana now. So if you have any back issues, you're going to keep your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. Take your feet wide to the wide edges of, edges of the mat and let your knees rest together. If you don't have any back issues, you can let your legs extend out long.
So stay resting in Shavasana for just a moment or two longer to receive your practice. I'm going to sit up and read you a poem. This poem is called Home by Susan Alexander. And she's the poet that I told you about, I think, last week. She lives on Bowen Island here in British Columbia. A wasp planes the stair rail. It chooses the softer wood between the grain lines, peels a curl and flies off. See where weathered silver strips away, reveals reddish gold how smooth kiln dried two by fours become ridged, textured. This is how change happens. A sliver of wood is chewed into paper and somewhere hidden a nest forms. So gradually allow your breath to deepen, wiggle your fingers and toes, bend your knees, roll to your right side, slowly make your way up to seated. So thank you so much for joining me for this beginner yin yoga class for the meridians. And if you feel like you understand the meridians and energy centers and how yin yoga affects them, better now then let me know by pressing that like button and if you know somebody who would benefit from this class or who would like to understand how yin yoga and the meridians work together then feel free to send this class with them share the knowledge with them <laughs> and if you understand how if you would like to join our next live class, then it's going to be December 29th, Friday, December 29th at 9 a.m. Pacific. We'll be doing a yin yoga class for lower back and hips. Now, let me know in the comments which meridian you feel you want to address most in your yin yoga practice. Do you want to address your gallbladder for assertiveness, stomach meridian for anxiety, your kidney meridian for energy, your liver meridian for irritability and frustration, or your urinary bladder meridian for calmness and peacefulness. Let me know in the comments. I'm looking forward to hearing that. I want to thank Cornelia uh, for your donation and Donna for your donations. Your donations help us keep the show going. We offer it freely, but it's not free for us to put together. So for example, this past week, we invested in all new batteries for our show. That might not seem like a big expense, but trust me these things eat batteries and we have ba we use batteries all over these are rechargeable batteries so yay so we don't have to fill up landfills we were we were handing them into um, specific sites where they were recycling our batteries but we were going through so so many of them so that was a, a fairly big investment for us so thank you for your donations they go to things like that and right now we're saving up for something that uh, Tim <laughs> Tim needs. So Tim does, I wish I could show you this right now. You can show on the other camera. D Tim uses, he has tennis balls on the bottom of his tripod and he moves his camera and we're he, very we're very lucky here to have a cameraman. Most uh, yoga shows, they just set up a tripod and leave it. <laughs> so uh, what Tim does is he has he has, yeah, you can show with the other camera. He has tennis balls on the bottom of his tripod and he moves the camera around like that. Only it gives us kind of ch -ch 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 stilted shots. And what we want to invest in is a slider. A slider costs $300 US and we're saving up for it right now. And I just know some of you are very quite generous with your donations. Like three donations would help us get there instantly and we could have a slider here by next week. I know it because you guys are so generous. So if you'd like to see gorgeous shots like this coming across, it just it goes with the flow of our show very nicely. It would allow us to pan, do these really beautiful seamless pans, and then you'd be able to see across 
the body. I just think it would flow really well with the yoga style class. So if you'd like to see us get one of those, you can make a donation, small or large. I know you could be there by next week and have a slider by next week. So <coughs> as I always say, sorry about that. Great. That's a cool way to use tennis balls. <laughs> yeah, you can put, have you seen in, as Tina says this is a cool way to use tennis balls. Uh, I think probably many of you have seen in, um, in primary schools, the teachers that put them on the bottom of their students' class, they don't have to get rid of that, of the kids' chairs all day. <laughs> uh, I'm getting people, were you asking for questions about what to do or something? Because they're saying, Gina says gallbladder. Gina wants to work on her gallbladder, so gallbladder is for assertiveness. Wonderful, Gina. Jane Lavender said, first for assertiveness. Gina says, the gallbladder for assertiveness. Wow, assertiveness. Okay, uh, two for assertiveness. What else have we got coming Gina up here? Says, kidney or bladder classes, please. T Tina says, kidney for energy, bladder for peacefulness. Yep. And Shara says, um, she loved it, and urinary for calmness. Shar, welcome, Shar. Shar is one of the, is that Shar Pennington? Uh, Shar Simpson. Shar Simpson. Shar uh, says peacefulness. Urinary for calmness. Uh, urinary, urinary bladder for calmness. Wonderful. I love that too. Teresa Goodman says, uh, always a lovely class. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Melissa. I'd like the meridian for calmness and the stomach meridian for anxiety. Yeah, stomach meridian for anxiety and uh, so uh, the urinary bladder for calmness and peacefulness. Wonderful. Thank you for letting me know which ones you want to focus on. And we had a question earlier in the class by, I'm a nice guy. So What's the question? On working the glutes in yoga. The question is on working the glutes in yoga. So in yin yoga, we're really relaxing the, the muscles and the connective tissues, and we're working the energetic body more than, uh, in, more than strengthening the body. It's a very different practice. But for yoga, we do have a strength building series in our membership community, and also we have a couple of strength classes, and we, we're gonna be putting out a strength autoresponder series very soon, like imminently. I think you've got it finished now, don't you? So, so, so I would recommend, sure sorry, I got a cough. <coughs> I would recommend chair pose, the warrior poses, um, goddess victory squat, all those are wonderful for strengthening your glutes. Also just getting outside and walking, going up and down stairs, riding your bike, all those things are wonderful for strengthening your glutes. So uh, keep the questions coming. I'm going to just... How to make a donation. It's usually on the... Is it melissawest.com slash donations? I'll just check. Uh, Tim will usually put a button up. On the, on the end screen, there's usually a, a donation button on the end screen. You can always email me and Tim will send you a link. Post a link in the show notes. Oh, Tim's going to post the link to it in the show notes. In the chat line. In the chat line. Thank you. We appreciate that. Helps us out a lot. Thank you, Teresa. So learning to do yin yoga is not something you can just do in, in one yoga class. And one of the things that I want to be talking about more and more and more uh, is that yin yoga is really a way of life. So there's three ways that you can do this. There's a good, better, and best way. Uh, one good way to incorporate yin yoga into your life is through uh, subscribing here on the channel. So make sure you uh, subscribe and uh, press that little bell because I told you at the beginning we've got lots of great classes coming up so you, that way you won't miss any. We've got one more beginner yin yoga class and then we're going into um, a bunch of yin yoga classes, a hips and back, upper body, upper back and shoulders, um, low back, hips, lots of great stuff coming up, yoga for, yin yoga for sleep. Uh, these are the most highly requested yin yoga classes. So they'll be coming to you in the coming weeks. And then uh, a better way would be to sign up for one of our autoresponder series. Uh, the one that I would recommend for you right now is the anxiety one, melissawest.com slash anxiety. If you go there, you'll receive seven day series of yoga classes to really calm and ease anxiety. So for those of you that were looking for calm and peacefulness, that's the one I would recommend for you. Uh, 
I think in another week's time, we'll have a yin yoga series ready for you uh, f the, because we'll have uh, five days of yin yoga classes that you can have sent to your inbox for you. The best way is to make uh, yin yoga part of your life is to become a member of our membership community. As I said, we have our indulgence classes on the last Sunday of every month. We do live workshops they're very in-depth we get into the mindfulness aspect of yin yoga a lot more uh they're 90 minutes and uh we spend uh just a lot of time it's two-way video conferencing so here you see me but there i also see you and we get to talk before and after and we have a, a really close personal relationship in our membership community so those are uh tim will put up the links for you for those things um and uh, those, those are the good, better, and best ways to uh, make yin yoga a part of your everyday life. So, uh, are there any other questions, Tim? Uh, Jan says she's just, she was late to the party, but she's going to watch the replay. Great, yes. The replay will be available probably tomorrow. It takes about 24 hours for it to go. You know what? Actually, she could let us know how long it takes. Oh, for yeah. Jan, let us know how long it takes. It seems to take 24 hours for us to see it. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, but it might We're be a bit. used to live streaming. And yeah. Um, any other questions about yin yoga? Or now that we've done the class on the meridians, are there any other questions about the meridians that have bubbled to the surface uh, over the course of doing the class? Let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to stay and answer them. It's Friday here. It's Black Friday. I'm going to try and stay away from the internet today, stay away from shopping. Uh, actually, I am going to a friend's pop-up shop today. So not entirely true. My friend Danny from Olo Dubois is a, a dressmaker here. She is a, an environmental dressmaker. She is part of the, our December team this year. She uh, makes dresses from, re, re, what do they call it, reconstituted. But what she does is she finds repurpose that's what she calls she repurpose it's like upcycling she finds dresses and things from thrift shops and then she remakes them so that things don't end up in landfills <coughs> sorry i've got a tickle now anyway she has a pop sh a pop-up shop today in uh victoria so we're going to be going and seeing her and seeing her dresses i know she has a holiday line and uh, we're looking forward to seeing Danny today and uh, somebody who's making a real difference in the world with what she does, with her passion, with her fashion. And if you want to join me, you can look on Tim's Instagram feed. No? Oh, for December, if you want to join me, uh, you can look on my website at melissawest.com. My last two vlogs have been about December. Basically, it's wearing a dress every day in December, and we do it to raise awareness to stop human trafficking. Uh, there's, It's just, it's horrific. I don't like to talk about it too much because it's uh, the number of children. There are 40 million people still in slavery and forced slavery in the world. A lot of children sold into sex slavery and also uh, a lot of children sold into slavery for fast fashion and sold into slavery uh, under the pretense that they're going to be given uh, shelter and food and clothing and then they end up in these horrific uh, working conditions so that we can have cheap clothes. And uh, it's, it's horrible. And it's not necessary, you know, we can buy our clothing at thrift shops and we don't have to partake in it. That's why I asked Danny from Olo de Bois to support our team because she's offering an alternative and there are alternatives. So, yeah, so it's something I do every year, wear a dress every day in December to raise awareness. I put the link up already. You put the link up for December? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. So the more people we can have for our team, uh, the better because uh, many people make light hands. I have a goal for our team to raise $10,000 this year. I'd like to raise $2,000 myself. Um, I think we can, I think we can do it. Uh, and one of my friends, Sherry is $10,000 for our team. Wow. It's a big, it's a big goal, but last year we raised three. <laughs> yeah. So I don't see why not. If you have enough people, right, you don't need each person doesn't have to raise that much. So, and it's not, you know, when you think about it, if you 
to wear a dress every day in December is nothing compared to what these people and children are going through on a daily basis. So it's something that I do each year to give back and to raise awareness because we are the 1% of the 1%. If you have internet and you're watching this right now, you're coming from a place of incredible privilege, right? And so, so I am incredibly grateful and uh, it's something that I can do to give back. So thank you very much for being here today. Were there any other questions that came up about the Meridians? Okay, thank you for being here. We appreciate your presence. We appreciate you so much. We appreciate having this platform to be able to share the teachings of yin yoga and yoga in general. Thank you for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day and we will see our members on Sunday for the 90 minute indulgence workshop. It's going to be a wonderful class. Sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May your joy be as deep as our Pacific Ocean. May you be as strong as our mountains and may you be as rooted as the trees in our forest. Om Shanti, Namaste. You can wave bye bye. I think I'm trying to figure out how to say bye bye. <laughs> Sorry. Stop streaming.